Hey, we're here at PRGE with Carl Forehan at the Songbird booth. How has it been going? It's, it's been good. quite the crowd this year. People yeah. have been like, it hasn't happened for two years. Yeah, I know. It's been super exciting. It's been nice to be back. I was here in 2019, so yeah. before the whole shutdown stuff happened. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this has been a great crowd. I've been really impressed at just the uh, the size of the crowd and yes. the quality of the events and the vendor booths, the arcade area. All that's been phenomenal. Yeah, PRG always puts on an amazing show and absolutely just huge crowds and great booths and yeah, awesome new games for old I know. systems and still going. And probably you've been like waiting to get these out at PRG because they haven't you haven't been uh, it hasn't been running for two years right so you've had a backlog yeah. to show people it's always fun I like coming to the shows and meeting people in person I mean I, of course yeah. most of my sales are online yeah but there's something different about being tactile face to face yes. getting to talk about the, the systems you like the games yes. you like the types uh, of games right. they like what they're looking for yeah exactly yeah. that's what I like because I don't consider myself much of a salesman but I enjoy <laughs> that process tell me what you like yes. if you like like shooter games, you like racing games, okay, here's a game you might enjoy. Right, and you've probably got enough variety here now, yeah. a backlog of stuff that you can say, oh, you can point them to something. Yeah, because I've been doing this since 1999, so I've got over 20 years of releases I've <laughs> built up here. Yeah, so you've got something for everyone. Hopefully. Yeah. So. Let's talk about some of the new releases uh, okay. that you have here for this year, or even the past couple of years. Okay. So um, a couple of things I've got is at the show here, I'm releasing two things. Yep. There's a limited release for uh, an Atari Lynx game called Microvaders. Yeah, so that this is good. You showed me that yesterday. Yeah. Like, this is right up my alley. It's super fun. I know people are excited about it, so that's why I wanted to get a version of it out there. That's I'm calling it like a preview edition. So right. it is a full game. Yeah. Uh, everything's implemented. You know, enemies, sound effects, music. Yeah. It's super fun, and I've been enjoying developing it so I wanted right. to get it out there so people could help kind of support the game and just enjoy it now and then I'm gonna make a sequel version next year right more music more bosses more waves of enemies excellent so, so. there's something here right now for people and it's and it's on sale it's it is I have the right cartridges now. here on sale at the booth for $50 and I've sold yep. about half of the 25 I brought with me so that's okay. been good well you've got a whole other day to sell the rest right yeah and then I also released a reprint for the new on DVD system which is super niche it's like I didn't <laughs> think you could go more niche than Atari stuff but yeah new wow. on DVD is even more niche and uh, I have a, a free fall uh, 3050 AD is a reprint of one of the like six or seven games that were actually released for Nuon 20 years ago got the license from the original developer and he agreed to do a one-time reprint so we're offering yeah. that for the first time here at the booth as well oh that's excellent so for people who don't know Songbird what yeah. kind of games like what kind of platforms right. do you release games yeah. for yep good question I mainly do Atari and now Nuon as well so uh, Atari Lynx Atari yeah. Jaguar yeah. Nuon DVD and then I have also started carrying the Evercade system which is not one that I yep. well I kind of I mean I did release a, a, a single Lynx cartridge a compilation of games for the Evercade yep. ecosystem uh, but otherwise uh, I, I carry the Evercade merchandise through my website as well and you hear a lot about the Evercade and it sounds like a great platform it is fun yeah. I like it because it, it bridges that gap between emulation and still physical copies on cartridge that you can yes. collect that's kind of the neat and market I, that it fills and I know I love physical cartridges yeah me too the digital ones you know you heard you, you hear stories about oh we're shutting down the servers or this one's yeah. not available anymore or even ones that uh, you know you have to register online so I love distributors that distribute hard physical copies yep. and of course we all grew up buying cartridges oh, yeah. so there's a bit of a nostalgia there but there's also a, a security that the game's not going to go away right yeah yep it'll still be playable yeah so <laughs> what has been the reaction as people come up and play the games and who may not know that there's new games yeah it's funny I mean like I said I've been doing this since 99 yeah. I still run into people who are Atari Lynx and Jaguar fans they have the systems they've right. never heard of me which is kind of funny but it's that's part of the fun of being live in person is yes. have you ever heard of these games did you know that these exist that there's homebrew yeah. developers that are still cranking out new products for these old systems and that's fun that's a lot of the fun and the appeal of coming to these shows yeah and I'm surprised, but we live in this world of homebrew and new games, but I'm always continually surprised that people don't know about it, even though they're dedicated fans right, right. of the Lynx or Jaguar or other uh, retro systems. Yeah. And uh, it's 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 fun when you can get a new person in, especially Absolutely. if it's like a genre they love. Yes. And there's also like a new sensibility to the homebrews that work with uh, modern games like uh, people are incorporating new types of uh, uh, 
interfaces or the way they yeah. play. New concepts in the games, yeah. right. Yeah, they're, like one thing I want to start doing in future games, I haven't done this really to date, but achievements. That's yes. something I think is super fun in like yes. modern Xbox, PlayStation games. Yes. The idea that you can play a game differently intentionally like pick up objects not pick up objects right. and then that can score you points yes i think that's a neat idea it's a way to get more replayability out of your games and encourage players that don't just say well i just did it the hard way just because they can actually have a little <laughs> star that appears it tells them they did it i think that's neat that is a lot of fun because you have the old things where you get patches for for scores right but bringing in that uh that achievement thing from the the world that people are now used to right those online things of doing weird little quir quirky quests so like yeah you know eating all the cheese in the world or in, in the game or something weird like that yes exactly that is a lot of fun yeah so um yeah anything else you want to add to uh your experience here at prg that you've uh, uh encountered just a lot of uh different fans that have come by which is fun you know I, i'll oh, sometimes yes. meet even other developers whether it's for other homebrew systems sometimes yep. uh actual programmers from like the Atari era back in the 80s and 90s yes, they'll come by sometimes fun. that's fun yeah uh, one guy came by yesterday had the Atari Jaguar dental equipment case oh yes I've heard of that yeah so <laughs> I posted a picture of that on Twitter yesterday and just like amazing response people were like that's so cool I thought it was a myth I didn't know that really happened I've never <laughs> seen one in person but I've seen pictures online that, right that is a lot of fun so do you get people from like say the community that you've interacted online with come to the booth absolutely yep and, a lot of people yeah, and you develop some of these games, right? I do. Some of them, uh, I do publish games from other developers, but yep. I also write code myself. So like the Microvaders game I talked about for the Lynx, that's yep. what I'm writing in assembly, right for the, the Lynx uh, 6502 processor. Yep. I do C code as well. And so, yeah, probably a half dozen Lynx games and a few Jaguar games I've worked on code uh, that I published over the years. Oh, that's that's very exciting to me. But the distributor and the developer it's at fun. the same time. I believe me, I wish if I could do this full time, I would do it because <laughs> it's so much fun. But you know. yeah, yeah. Well, the, we we hope the retro community be get bigger and bigger, so you can that would do be this nice. full time. I'd love to do this. Right. Full -time I always too. have a backlog. So I have a backlog of you know ten projects that I never oh, get to because yeah. there's so many things I'm trying to get done, and oh, just yeah. got to take my time think, at it. I think we all do. It's like limited time, and yeah, yeah we want more time. So thanks so much. Yeah, thank for you. talking with us and finally meeting you in person. Yep, this That's has been excellent. fun. Excellent. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate it. And enjoy the rest of the show. You too.